Hello, crypto and mining community. Max Voltage here. And today we're going to talk about Hive OS and their pricing structure. It is not as clear cut as it may seem to some people. I know I've had some questions about it as we as I've grown from zero to one to two to three to four to five rigs. So I've seen how my pricing and what it costs me has gone up and I've looked at the trade-offs of what to do because there's a lot of different options as far as how to pay for the service. So I'm going to go over all of that from starting to growing. So let's get started and let's look at their standard pricing page. So this actually, believe it or not, does explain most circumstances. So when you just start out and you have one rig, it's free. That's nice and simple. No matter what pool you're mining on, doesn't matter. You have one free rig. Now you grow to the second rig or the third or the fourth rig. If you are mining on anything but Ethereum, you can mine on any pool you want. So if you had one rig on Ethereum and three rigs on Ravencoin, it will not cost you a dime. The question though is, what do you do if you wanna continue mining Ethereum? Because yeah, it is still the most profitable coin. So you have to decide at that point, do you mine on the Hivon pool or do you mine on some other pool? And a lot of people just say, hey, it's nice and simple. I don't wanna to have to pay them a, a fee not always the right decision. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you hopefully where I'd say it's the wrong decision to make. So let me show you mining pool profits is a website that shows you how profitable each of the different mining pools are. So I currently mine on EtherMine. Is it always the most profitable? No. Is it ever the most profitable? No, not really, but it's cons it's a consistent performer. And in every case, it, it always does better than Hivon. So if we look at over 90 days, 60 days, 30 days, 21 days, 14 days, actually all the way down to three days, everywhere along this, Ethermine outperforms Hivon. So if we look at it all the way up to 90 days, Ethermine is minus 1%, meaning that they are 1% less than the top performer, which in this came, case is Mining Pool Hub, okay? So we go down to Hivon, it's 11% below. So basically it's 10% less than what Ethermine is making. So when we go all the way along here and you're gonna see that there's a difference of around 6% as you get more recent. And then one day, that's luck. Uh, you never wanna evaluate a pool on anything less than even seven days because luck can have a tremendous effect. And if you look at these smaller pools that have done really well, you see it's truly because of their luck. If we look at Mining Pool Hub, that luck that they had from the 60-day mark to the, th to the three-day mark, you can see that they had better than average luck. If you look at the Zet Pool, you can see from 30 days in, they've had tremendous luck. You know, the, the one day luck they had was 65%. That means they're mining 50 to 60% more uh, transactions per, you know, given hash rate. You know, it doesn't matter how you measure it. If you have one giga hash and you were on Zet, that means you're going to be making about 50 to 60% more than with, with that same hash rate on another pool. Again, this is luck based, but if you look at the luck across Ethermine versus Hivon, Hivon actually is showing that it has better luck, but yet is getting worse payouts. So I'm just going by the numbers. I get nothing against Hivon. I use Hive OS. I don't, and they have a different payout structure. They are PPS plus. I think that's probably has more to do with why it doesn't pay out as high, but I can't say for sure. All I'm going by is the numbers. Numbers tell me that I am better off paying the $3 a month and mining on Ethermine than it is for me to not pay the $3 a month per rig and mine on Hivon. So 
My first decision point is, no, I am not going to be mining on Hyvon, at least until they can show that they are consistently up, uh, uh, perf you know, per performing on about the same level as an Ether mine. An Ether mine is going to be average most of the time because they own about 25% of the hash rate. And when you own that much hash rate, your luck evens out because you're constantly hitting blocks. So you'll see that their their luck is pretty level. I mean, you got 101, 102, 102, 102, 101, 101, 102. Yeah, I've got it kind of small. So it's hard even for me to read. I'm sure you guys probably have trouble reading it as well. But then you then obviously the one day they had some bad luck today. So anyway, bottom line is you're gonna be more profitable if you don't mine on Hivon and that you mine on some other pool. I mean, take your pick. Every single one of these other pools is going to be more, I shouldn't say every single, but most other pools are going to be more profitable than Hyvon. So let's go back to the prices. So in this particular case, yes, we made the determination that Hyvon is not the best way to go. It's best to pick a different pool. And therefore, you're going to be paying $3 per worker on this uh, particular model. So you're going to have one that's free and then you're going to pay for three other workers. Okay, so in that case, let's say you had four workers. In that case, you're paying $9 a month for four workers. So now we jump up to five workers and now you're paying for all five. There is no free rig at that point. Okay, so... But there are a couple other options that you have when you jump up to this level. You could actually mine on Hyvon and pay your fees via a 3% rate on Hyvon. Yeah, 3% on Hyvon? I did the math. Unless your rigs, unless your rigs average less than about 52 mega hash per rig, it, this is not a good option. The 3% on a Hyvon pool, if you have over 52 mega hash on your rigs, is not the best option. You're, it's cheaper to pay the $3 per month per rig. So bottom line is, yes, st when you start out, zero, first rig is free. Next three rigs, you're going to be paying $3. Yes, it's tempting to use the Hyvon pool, it's better off that you pay the $3, be more profitable, and, uh, and pay the $3 per rig for those first four. When you jump to five, now you're paying for all five. Let's say you're on the fifth one, you're paying $15 uh, a month um, for this. Now, what's interesting about this one if, when you're at five is if any given day you're down for just a little bit of time on one of your rigs, it will say you're not at five uh, rigs. It'll say you're at 4.9 rigs. And when you're at 4.9, you then revert to getting one free. I've noticed this because I just got into five rigs. So I've got about a month where I'm on five rigs. And some of the days where I have just a little bit of an outage, I'm paying you know closer to around 30 cents, just below 30 cents per day. Um, but when I'm at a full five rigs per day, I'm paying closer to 50 cents. So I'm not worried about that. Um, I believe I Hive, Hive OS provides a great service. I don't mind paying um, for a good service to make sure that it stays in business and all that. So I have no trouble paying for the fee, but it's good to know how the system works and it is beneficial. You know, they are trying to make sure that you're only paying for what you're using. So therefore, if you're down for 5, 10, 15 minutes uh, a day, that's the way their system calculates things. So just something to keep in mind. So I actually can show you this uh, on this particular down here. You can see, you know, this is a single day, 48 cents, 48 cents, 48 cents. But you jump down here where it says 0.86 and 3.45 all of a sudden I'm down to 24 cents. Again, here, one. Now here's a day. I'm almost on one of the rigs at one. The other ones are just barely below four. And look, I've jumped down to 29 cents from 48 cents. So 
Would it probably benefit me to turn my rigs, turn one rig off for five minutes a day? Yeah, I suppose, but I'm not going to do that. So anyway, so that's something, something to keep in mind. Uh, now, the other thing is a lot of people get confused on how to actually fund their account. So, and I've run into this because there's two different ways, two different places where you can fund your account. On this one, I've got a, I've got the actual mining farm selected. So I've gone to billing and I can come down here and fund my farm. So I'm not, I'm sending it directly into a location where it's going to pay for my rigs. Okay. So in this case, I'm doing personal address deposit and I'm doing it via coin payments and I will just transfer it into either uh, from my Bitcoin in my exchange to this address or if I want to use Litecoin, I can use this address. So basically you're just doing a simple transfer. So it makes it very, very simple to do, but it's not intuitive. First time, first couple of times I did this, I was like, what is this? Doesn't make any sense to me, but the system coin payments generates the personal addresses that when you submit payment to this address, it will show up as a balance in your account. So one thing to keep in mind is if you make a deposit for three months in advance, you get a 30% bonus. So that's huge. So in my case, my minimal payment for my three months is $42 because I'm about $15 a month, but when take everything into it and the few outages I've had, they take the average over the last three months, that's $42. So if I deposit $42, I will get an additional bonus of 30% on top of that. So this I would definitely recommend everybody to do. It makes it much less expensive. I mean, you take 30% off. I mean, instead of paying $3, now you're paying $240 or about thereabouts. So definitely a big benefit and is a huge cost saver. Now, one thing I did by mistake one particular time is I deposited it into my account, not into my farm. So if, so for instance, here, let me go back to the other screen. Basically, if you just go into Hive OS, now you're into your account. So you can add funds into your account, but this isn't going to put it into your farm. Now it's just in your funds. So if we again look at, go back to the farm, you can see your funds is zero. That's where you'd be depositing it instead of depositing it directly into the farm. I just think it's better unless you've got multiple farms, it's just better to just make sure you're making your deposit into your farm directly and you don't have to worry about reimbursing yourself. So if I again went into billing, And we go and we scroll down to personal address deposit, and then you can also do a fixed amount. But again, this it says deprecated method. I don't believe that this doesn't work anymore. You have to use your personal address. Now, my deposit, this is taking funds from your account if you deposited it there first. Like I said, I did that once by mistake. I was very confused. Wait a minute, I have funds in my account. How are you telling me my farm doesn't have funds? And then I finally figured it out. Oh, I need to transfer the funds from this, your funds to the actual farm. So don't make that mistake. Just deposit it into your farm and be done with it and make it easier. So that's another thing to, to keep in mind. And I wanted to also highlight that there are a number of other sources of information that you can look for. So if you look up here, there's a billing frequently asked questions. It answers all kinds of questions for you. For example, one of the things that was uh, that I've heard asked, okay, what if I'm mining on one card on Hiveon and the rest of them are on a different pool? Well, then that means you're going to be paying for seven seven GPUs worth of that um, of that particular rig. You'll be paying that fee because they basically will prorate it by the number of GPUs on Hivon versus another pool. 
So you can't, tr you're not supposed to be able to trick the system by mining on one card on Hivon and the rest on another pool. Now I have heard from people that if you are dual mining Ethereum and Zill, that that somehow does trick the system to thinking that you're not mining Ethereum, that you're in fact mining Zill. I have not verified that. I'm just telling you that that's what I've heard. So, and I've heard that from a direct source, not a friend of a friend. This is somebody that specifically told me that they have not been charged for it. So just something to, uh, to also uh, keep in mind. So again, there are uh, a number of different sources of information. There's uh, uh, frequently asked questions. There's forum posts. There's lots of different information uh, that allows you. Um, this is the uh, frequently asked questions. So there's a lot of information out there as far as how your particular situation will be handled and how much you will be charged. So I hope that clears it up uh, quite a bit for people as to how are they getting charged? Sometimes I think Hyvon does get behind as your situation changes and you might add or remove things, but they will eventually catch up. So keep that in mind. So anyway, well, thank you very much for tuning in and I hope that cleared up any misconceptions or misunderstandings as to how they handle uh, billing. If you have any questions about this, please put them in the comments below and I'll do my best to clarify anything that was in this video. Also, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe and hit the bell notifications to be notified of future videos. Again, thanks and uh, have a great day.